This is online lecture one, introduction to Adobe Acrobat. Start with a brief history of Adobe Acrobat. In the early 1990s, as you may recall from our first lecture, the modern internet as we know it now had just been released to the public. And one thing that had become clear is that uh, we needed some way of uh, trading documents from one place to the other using a common application. At the time, the only way to do this was to have the application it was written on. For example, if a document was written on uh, WordPerfect, you weren't able to open it on anything but WordPerfect. So we needed something that was a common that be used on multiple platforms, including uh, different computer types such as Apple and uh, um, Windows-based computers. Now, there were numerous companies in competition that create the software product. In 1993, Adobe uh, released their first suite of products to meet this need. At the time, they called them Adobe Reader, Acrobat Exchange, and Acrobat Distiller. Now, uh, Adobe has actually been changing their uh, names of their software quite frequently over the years, and as you'll see, it uh, goes by a different name now, but that was the uh, basic product back then. Uh, was still the same idea where you had the reader that would be used just to read, and then Exchange and Distiller had to do with creating the actual documents from their source documents. So Adobe was actually responsible for the creation of the PDF or portable document format standard. They actually invented it. Uh, at the time of, of its release in 1993, it was proprietary and remained that for quite some time, which meant that other companies could not write software using this standard format. By 2008, the uh, PDF format was so common and used so widely that it was uh, released for an, as an open standard, which means that other companies could uh, use the PDF standard in their software. And of course, now a PDF documents are quite commonplace. Prior to 2008, the only company that could write software utilizing the PDF format was Adobe. Since then, many other companies have come out with their own PDF uh, editing uh, software uh, packages. However, the uh, Adobe packages are the original uh, packages uh, that came out for this use. The basic idea of a PDF is that you have a document that resembles uh, the document that may have come off something like Word or WordPerfect or something along those lines. However, in this format, it cannot be altered, uh, which allows it to be more secure. So you can share documents without having people make changes to them. Uh, the other thing is that it can be viewed on many different devices and many different operating systems uh, without having to uh, use the original software that the document was created in. So there are a number of key features of PDF files that are notable. First one is compatibility. Uh, so PDF files are viewable and printable on today virtually any platform. Of course, that includes Windows and Macs, but also Android, uh, other Apple products, and even uh, ebook readers such as Kindle, uh, Sony, and so forth. Accessibility uh, has to do with assistive technologies for uh, people with disabilities. That particular feature is... Uh, one of the more advanced features in the uh, Adobe Acrobat uh, DC Pro, as we'll see later. Security is also common in PDF documents. So one way you can protect them is with passwords. You can actually prevent a PDF document from being copied or printed or have, having the pages extracted. You can even prevent it from uh, people from uh, copying text out of the pages using uh, copy and paste and uh, you can stop it from being printed as well. So there are many levels of security that you can assign to these documents using PDFs. 
Another uh, important feature of PDF documents is searchability. Along with uh, the other advantages, PDF documents allow you to do searches within uh, the actual document, which is not common in other uh, files such as Word or uh, WordPerfect. And these text uh, features also use something called metadata. Now, metadata is basically data about data. In other words, it's information about the content of the file itself. PDFs are also very efficient for storage purposes. They are highly compressed. Uh, Adobe uses different uh, algorithms to uh, make the file as small as possible without losing its quality. Now, another thing that people may not be aware of is font management. When you have a, a computer and operating system, if you uh, go into a uh, application such as Word or Excel, and you have many different fonts available, the reason those fonts are available is because they are installed on that machine. They would not show up in those applications if they weren't. With the PDF files, any font that they use is embedded into the file. Now, what this means is if you have a font in a PDF file that doesn't exist on the computer you're viewing it on, it will still show up as that font because it's embedded in the file. It does not require it to be on the computer itself. Extensibility. Uh, PDF files also contain features do not, that do not affect the final appearance but are useful, such as, again, metadata, which is data about data. That can contain things like title, author, creation date, and also file identifiers, which is a reference uh, that helps one PDF file identify contents of another. We'll take a look right now at what the current or contemporary Adobe Acrobat products are. Now, I had mentioned what they start out as in uh, 1993, and I've also mentioned that Adobe does like to change their uh, product names quite frequently. So currently, what they have is in the Adobe Acrobat suite, there is a Reader DC. That is the free version that we're going to be loading in our lab this week. It allows you to view and print PDFs, also electronic signatures. Uh, the DC standard has the editing features, and it's not as uh, extensive as the DC Pro, but both of them allow you to edit and create B, uh, PDF documents. The only difference with DC Pro is it's upgraded to allow certain scanning features and accessibility modifications. So for the Acrobat software for this class, in this week's lab, we'll be downloading the free version of Acrobat Reader uh, DC, which you can uh, uh, get just about anywhere. And uh, in fact, uh, you may already have it downloaded on your device. Uh, in case you do, you can skip this step. Uh, when we get to the Acrobat DC Pro for the remainder of the labs, you will need to use the uh, KVCC lab computers uh, located on campus. It's the only time you'll need to go uh, in person uh, to campus to use these computers for these uh, remaining seven labs. Uh, there is an option. If you would like to purchase a subscription for DC Pro on your device, of course, that'd be at your expense. I'll provide information for that. Uh, keep in mind, though, that uh, Acrobat DC Pro only runs on PCs and Macs. So it does not run on smartphones, iPhones, tablets, or Chromebooks. And also, uh, you can uh, purchase this uh, subscription from Adobe for about $25 per month, which you can, uh, which you can cancel at any time. So if, uh, you, only, if you got your uh, labs done within a month or two months, it would be relatively inexpensive to purchase the software to use from home. through real quickly uh, the system requirements. Now, if you have a Microsoft Windows computer, that's any computer running Windows, uh, you're going to need uh, these requirements. A processor 1.5 gigahertz or faster. You can run on Windows basically 7, any Windows 8 or Windows 10. So if you don't have at least Windows 7, it probably won't work. Uh, you should have one gigabyte of RAM, which is 
extremely common. There shouldn't be any problem there. Requires 4.5 gigabytes of a hard drive space and uh, 1024 by 768 screen resolution as well as uh, Internet Explorer 11, Firefox, or Chrome. So uh, most computers are going to have these qualifications. I will mention that the 1.5 gigahertz uh, requirement, I am quite sure that uh, some laptops run in uh, less than that, say 1 gigahertz, 1.2. They should be fine. They may not be as fast as you'd like them to be. But anything with those uh, meets those requirements should work just fine. But the most important one is, of course, that it has to be Windows 7 or higher. Requirements for Macs. Now, I am personally not as familiar with the Mac uh, devices, but these are the uh, requirements for it. Apparently, it requires an Intel processor. The listed uh, Mac OS versions, uh, probably the latest uh, Safari browser versions. And again, one gigabyte of RAM, which is very much and uh, the hard drive space and the screen resolution are pretty standard uh, amongst any uh, contemporary computer or laptop. So this concludes uh, the first lecture uh, introduction to Adobe Acrobat. Uh, please be sure to complete the quiz that goes along with this lecture. And then after that, there's also an additional video for the first lab, which uh, we will be doing using the Acrobat Reader software.